Welcome to the New River in Ketlin Farms. I'm going to take you on a little journey of the area, starting at the lowest terrace at 10 meters and going all the way to the highest at 128 meters, showing you the beautiful geology and the impact that has had on agriculture and history that you can still see today. But first, let's go to Kayla, who's going to show you the gorgeous New River itself and how those terraces have formed. This is the New River. Flowing through North Carolina, Virginia, and into West Virginia, this 320 mile long northerly flowing river is somewhere between 10 and 360 million years old. New River's old age means that it's been around for quite a bit of geologic history, and it records that history in the form of terraces. Terraces can be thought of steps that mark where the river bottom once was. The highest terraces represent the oldest steps, and the lower terraces represent the youngest. Locations next to the New River record these terraces, like at Ketlin Farm. The ages of the New River terraces were determined using a technique called radionuclide exposure dating. This technique measures the amount of a specific isotope which only forms on Earth's surface, giving an approximate age to the terraces. Thanks, Kayla! That was a great introduction of the New River and the formation of its terraces. Now let's go to David, who's at one of the youngest terraces. Here at the 10 meter terrace, you'll notice a large section of flat land. This is the lowest and youngest terrace. So, if you look here and see the water here, this is the water table, which shows that we are very close to the river. You'll also notice these large quartz cobbles. They're very round. They were transported here from the headwaters of the New River in North Carolina. Here we are on the 20 meter terrace. As you can see, there's no pits here to see the sediment, but if we could look into the ground, there is a light tan sediment color that will become darker as you move up the terraces. There's also a very shallow bedrock here when compared to the 10 meter terrace down below. This area is very flat, which makes it good for farming, but that's also remarkable compared to the terraces up there, which have a much more pitted structure. So let's go take a look. The most significant karst areas in Virginia are located in the Valley and Ridge province. These karst areas result from the limestone and dullstone bedrock of the Elbrook Formation undergoing deformation and fracturing. One of these karst areas lies beneath the 40 to 50 meter terrace at Kentland Farm. These karst areas create sinkholes which result in topography that is very different from the other terraces. Now Alexis is going to show us the effects of karst on the topography of the 40 to 50 meter terrace. Here at the 40 to 50 meter terrace, you can see behind me rolling hills. This is due to the karst topography of the area. To the right of me, you can see the Kitlin Family Cemetery, which Winnie is going to go into more detail about. Here at the cemetery, we'll see James Randall Kent's headstone. James Randall Kent acquired the farm in the early 1800s, and his property value was estimated to be $126,000, which is about $4 million today. He and his daughter, who lived across the river, had an estimated amount of slaves of 250 according to the 1860 census. But of course, life for the enslaved people was much different than James Kent's. Many of them were reported to be in masonry and were true artisans like you can see in the Kentland Farm smokehouse that is still standing today. If you're able to get close enough to it, you may even see their fingerprints left in the brick. Enslaved dwellings were demolished in later years, so little is known about them in their culture. But the smokehouse provides a great insight that they brought their West African culture with them, shown in the construction of the smokehouse itself with a sharp corner set which is believed to bring good luck. Other than the smokehouse, all that remains to honor the legacy and lives of the people who worked is this monument erected by many of the slave people's descendants who live in the Wake Forest community just a few miles away. Wake Forest was established shortly after the Civil War and remains a black community where agriculture and artistry still reign supreme. I'm standing here at the 128 meter terrace, which is the highest terrace at Kentland Farm. Now, this, uh, this terrace has been exposed to the most amount of weathering because it's the oldest, and that has resulted in a very dark red color, which you can see here. The sandstone in this area has been weathered so extensively that it just crumbles at the touch. Oh, hi, Mark. You're looking at the red soils here. Um, like you said, yeah, there's been extensive weathering here, and with more weathering, uh, the sediments uh, break up into smaller grain sizes so there's a lot of clay content here and actually as we've been traveling up the terraces there's even more clay content so there's a, a greater water holding capacity here which makes this area so good for farming because of the iron in the soil here it makes it very acidic uh, and that's actually very good for apple trees 
Whether it's the beautiful rolling hills with the karst topography, the crumbly sandstone, or the valley which the New River itself runs through, the terraces, the New River itself, and its surrounding geology is captivating both in scenery and geologic interest. This beautiful history has made the lands into what we know it is today, the rich agricultural farmlands that has been feeding not only us Virginia Tech students, but has an important cultural ties to the region and its citizens. But don't take my word for it. Go see it yourself.